Hello, welcome to another episode of the How To CEO podcast. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by the co-founder of Subspace Labs, uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, welcome. Hi, Murray. Thank you very much for having me. R really an honor to be on the show. So, so please uh, introduce yourself and your project. Sure. So uh, my name is Jeremiah Wagstaff. I am the co-founder and CEO at uh, Subspace Labs. And uh, if you haven't noticed, I'm, I'm here in the metaverse right now uh, where I work and I work with my team from time to time in, a, in an app called Immersed. I'm using an Oculus Head Quest uh, 2 VR headset, but we'll talk more about that later. Uh, but just wanted to point that out. Uh, but yeah, Subspace is a, uh, it's a new layer one blockchain um, that we are building. Uh, it's still in the development stage. Um, and uh, we have uh, been focused on solving some of these core problems in blockchain around uh, sustainability, energy efficiency, security, decentralization, scalability. Um, and we have a, a very new uh, consensus mechanism that addresses several of these problems that allows anybody to participate in consensus with their home computer, uh, basically. And it also scales uh, massively. It scales as we add more users, more computers to the network. There's a lot of things blockchains are good for. One of the one of the things that we're really really interested about blockchain at Subspace, and we think is going to be a really big uh, part of it in the future, is uh, NFTs, uh, which are blockchains really well suited to to, to storing and hosting because it's a data storage blockchain. That's a, one of, one of its features, and also the metaverse. Um, and we and and uh, we're really bullish on on a, on a crypto kind of version of the metaverse as well. Okay, so so tell me what is the what is the problem precisely that you're solving? And then what are the business opportunities that you see uh, coming out of this that, that CEOs will want to know about? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so when it comes to our blockchain, there's a lot of these core problems around, um, you know, like uh, environmental sustainability, like the electricity usage for proof of work blockchains, Bitcoin and Ethereum, for example, there's these proof of stake blockchains. Uh, a lot of newer ones doing this, Ethereum's upgrading, you know, you've got Polkadot, Cardano, Solana, whatnot. They, uh, they, they basically exclude a lot of people from participating because it's, it's basically, you have to have a lot of money to participate in these protocols as a staker. So we're trying to solve sort of both of those problems at once so we can have energy efficient consensus based on storage, which everybody has, everybody has a computer with free storage. Um, so we're trying to uh, really solve this problem of maintaining decentralization and maintaining open participation in blockchains and really sort of more democratic version of, of blockchain uh, governance, I guess you could say. And as a result of that, we get a uh, we get a very scalable, the, the particular way we solve that, we do this uh, consensus called proof of archival storage. Uh, what that means is we get very low cost, very cheap, uh, scalable, uh, permanent storage on chain, on, block, on the blockchain. And there's certain use cases where that storage really makes a lot of sense. One of those use cases, one of those really more specific problems is NFTs. Uh, so when you when you have an NFT uh, on, a, uh, uh, on a blockchain, typically that NFT has, uh, the blockchain is really just tracking the ownership data about the NFT. So basically it says, you know, Murray owns uh, this NFT on Ethereum. And then it's, and what is the NFT? Well, there's some hash, uh, some pointer, uh, which, which points to some like website, some server, where you know, the art, the video, the music, uh, the content data of the NFT actually lives. And uh, people would love to store that on the blockchain, but the problem is the cost of storing that data is so high. It's literally millions of dollars to store like a few megabytes on a blockchain. And we're making it so that you can store that data uh, directly on the chain. Um, and it has the same guarantees of, per of persistence and immutability as, the, um, as, the, as, the, as just the uh, ownership data does. Um, so you never have to worry about the NFT disappearing. And one place where that really, really matters for NFTs is in the metaverse, because uh, our, our belief is that uh, a, a vast majority of the assets in the metaverse will be NFTs, and they already are in the crypto metaverse. And so let's let talk through some of the, um, the business cases, the business scenarios that you see um, already in progress, and then things that you might see that, that might... Uh, come along and that, that op might be opportunities. Sure, yeah, um, I mean, there's so many. It's like uh, when it comes to, to NFTs in the metaverse, 
we, we when we talk about it, uh, you know, internally, we think a lot of like the the internet in the 1990s when everybody was trying to build a website and everybody was like, how do we get into e-commerce um, and how do we adapt our business model um, to take advantage of this new distribution channel? And I think that we're at this stage now where everybody's trying to figure out the same thing. Like, how do we how do we integrate? How do we have a presence in the metaverse and how do we productize whatever we offer, what we used to offer in the digital, in the physical world, how do we offer it in the digital world? Um, and really blockchains are key to doing both of these things. So do you see that primarily coming out then first in entertainment and gaming or I've spoken to someone who is um, creating a, a proof of creation and storage for wine, for example. W what do you see as the uh, uh, early adopters and, and where there's, where there's, how does that connect with traditional uh, Web2 businesses? Yeah, it's a great question. So, so gaming is definitely a huge one. Um, I mean, Axie Infinity is, is, is you know, the, the quintessential example of that. They really started as an NFT protocol in a game, and, and now they've kind of grown into the metaverse, um, and, and they're deploying their own sort of realm of the metaverse now, which is really exciting to watch. So I think gaming is going to be a huge part of it for sure. I think it's going to, it's, it's really going to kind of merge. I mean, I think it, uh, the, the, the trend is going to be towards sort of a, Entertainment and gaming and experiencing things online are all going to sort of merge into one kind of experience. So, yeah, I think music music is definitely a big one. That's one that we've we've looked at in the metaverse uh, quite a bit. Uh, so, that imagine that you're in a uh, you know a virtual space. There's a virtual jukebox. Uh, you want to play songs on that jukebox. Uh, those songs are NFTs. Uh, every time you play the song, you have a micropayment in crypto, and you, um, you know, the the creator gets some royalty on that song being played, and only the people that are within, you know, some distance of the jukebox actually hear the song. So, so that's like one really specific example. Um, video is probably going to be the same way. Events, um, yeah. I mean, there's so, there's so many like like an example that I like to think of is. Uh, you know, you go back to the 1990s with uh, the war between Amazon and Barnes and Noble and kind of what was the future, you know, what what was it was it going to be like bricks and clicks or was it going to be uh, pure online like Amazon did? And, and it seems like that whole argument is like standing on its head now, again, because you could have a virtual bookstore that you could go into and you could, uh, you know, in the metaverse and you could browse the books that you wanted to see. It, you're not just limited to the sort of like 2D kind of list view of, of seeing things, which I think anybody like, any, like a book lover like myself really prefers going into like a bookstore and looking at books and browsing them. And now you can sort of do that in a way that looks more like an Amazon uh, business model. Um, and, and, and that's just like one small example for one industry, but I think every industry is going to be sort of facing the same sort of question. How do we reimagine our experience in this in this metaverse world? So, I mean, I see with, with music, with um, content that's relatively light, but but are we going to be able to see uh, a Netflix? Are we going to be able to store full-length video, uh, high-quality uh, film content? Uh, is that is that going to come pretty fast, or are we going to have to wait for that? Well, that's that's really uh, one of the things that we're working on, is, is being able to store uh, very high volumes of data uh, on-chain. On um, uh, so that could be uh, gig hundreds of gigabytes or even terabytes, um, and making that uh, co like cost effective. So yeah, we think. I mean, and uh, we we believe in terms of uh, data storage, we we have probably the best the best protocol in the world for doing that at scale at 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 uh, reasonable cost. Um, and I would say, yeah, within in in the near term, you know, within the next year or two. So is this is this just for um, for entertainment, or I mean, do you see a do you see an application where, for example, you're you're competing with, say, Dropbox or one of the other um, uh, online storage uh, uh, elements, or, or how, and and how will that work? Yeah, that's a great question, um, and and the answer is no. Um, we don't really see ourselves as a generic data storage platform, and we're not trying to compete 
um, and we don't think it's it's even a reasonable, you know, that, that many users would want uh, to store their data on a blockchain, uh, especially their personal data. We are really hyper focused on crypto native use cases uh, for for our you know that's where we think like blockchain based storage or even just decentralized storage generally is more interesting um, and and makes more sense. And uh, so so yeah, NFTs is a big one and 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 anything that you would imagine as an NFT in the metaverse. So not just video generally, but video that would be experienced in in the metaverse or video that would be experienced as an NFT, like a music video, for example. That. Uh, that makes a lot more sense uh, to you know to store on our protocol. And you could even look at something like Aldius, you know, uh, the uh, sort of Spotify of crypto. You know, they have a lot of data, um, and and you know that would be that would be another great example of like you know th they have a decentralized network of, st of of storing and hosting that data um, because they want it they they don't want it to depend on their company or or a single server. Uh, to work, they want it to be just like Bitcoin at the end of the day, where it just kind of lives out on the internet. And you know, that's that's another use case where where our storage would matter, um, but not probably for like people that want to store their own songs like on their own, you know, uh, personal folder or something like that. And so, if people want to find out more about this, where are some uh, great communities for them to go to or uh, projects for them to look at? Yeah. Um, so for us, uh, subspace.network is our website. Uh, that's a great place to go. Um, there's a learn and the news page on there and some videos talking about the protocol. All Everything about our protocol is open source, you know, on GitHub. And Twitter is a great place to follow us. If you want to learn more about uh, NFTs and the metaverse, oh man, there's so many things to look at. I would say crypto voxels would be a great place to start. Um, that's very easy, uh, very easy entry. You can't do it in VR yet, unfortunately, like I am uh, right now. But but crypto voxels is very, very cool, very exciting. It just reminds me of the very early days of the of uh, the web in the '90s. And what about some Discord groups that uh, that you'd recommend? Obviously, you, the, your own. Yeah, yeah. So we have a Discord link on our homepage. Um, yeah. Uh, I believe Voxels has a Discord. Um, I know that uh, the the Central Land has a really good Discord. That's another one. Uh, so the Central Land, the Sandbox, uh, Somnium Space. Somnium Space is a VR based uh, crypto metaverse. Yeah, I, I mean, basically all these. If you just go to their website, they'll. All, I mean, everybody in crypto's got a good Discord that you could that you could hop into. And then, if people uh, want to help you, how can they? What are you looking for? How can people help you? Yeah, great question. Um, so the main thing uh, that, that that you can do to help us right now is to run a node on our test net. So if you go uh, into our into our Discord group, you can, you know, it will be it will be very clear that you can run a, run run a node a, a farmer. We actually are just now releasing a desktop farmer, um, so you can do it as a GUI. You don't need to have any kind of uh, command line or or terminal experience, which you had to have before. And you can run a node on our test net and, and, and just help us kind of debug our protocol. And uh, you're not going to get paid anything for doing that. There's not any direct rewards or incentives yet, but we will be uh, upgrading that test net to incentivized where you actually get uh, test net tokens, will, which will convert to mainnet tokens uh, once we launch. That's awesome. And if people want to connect with you personally, how do they do that? Oh, okay. Uh, the best way to do that would be uh, probably through Discord, um, uh, Twitter as well. Uh, I'm at Ro Rogue Leader, RG3L3DR. Um, and uh, yeah, that would be the best. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks for, thanks for having me, Murray. It was great, great getting to talk and uh, being on the show. Thank you. I'm Murray Newlands. You've been listening to another episode of the How to CEO podcast. I'll see you next time.